Hi folks, today's lecture is going to be on muscles of the arm that are going to act on the elbow and sometimes the shoulder. So today we're going to look at five different muscles that are going to occupy the upper arm, the brachial region. We're going to look at the biceps brachii, the brachialis, the brachioradialis, the coracobrachialis, and the triceps brachii. Now maybe you're wondering, what is up with this root word, root word, root word everywhere? Well, as you may remember from the beginning of the year, the brachial region is the upper arm region. And so all these muscles are going to occupy either the anterior or the posterior um, section or what's called a compartment of the um, upper arm. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first muscle we're going to look at today is called the biceps brachii. Now you may remember we have discussed this I think in class and what we're going to see with the biceps brachii is that it has two origins and one insertion. So we've got an origin here on the coracoid process of the scapula and that's this part right here is what's known as the short head of the biceps. And then this section over here, this part is known as the long head of the biceps and its origin is on a place called the supraglenoid tubercle which is a small bump just above the glenoid fossa on the scapula and this tendon right here is going to sit in the intertubercular groove and there'll be a little ligament that will hold it in place keep it in that groove between the two tubercles the insertion point is going to be down here on the radial tuberosity so what do you suppose this particular muscle does? Well, if you remember at the beginning of this unit, I mentioned that muscles will um, act on the joints that they cross over. And so this particular muscle is actually going to cross over the glenohumeral joint and it's going to cross over the humeral ulnar joint. And so it's going to have action at both of these joints that I've circled here in yellow. So. Have you got your ideas? How's it going to act on the elbow? Well, we only have really two options there. We have flexion and we have extension. And so clearly, in this case, the biceps brachii is going to pull upward and it's going to cause flexion at the elbow. And then how about at the glenohumeral joint or at the shoulder joint? Well, we have a lot of options here, but it's going to do the same thing for the shoulder. It's going to allow you to lift that arm to the front and that's known as flexion at the glenohumeral. So we've got flexion at the elbow and flexion at the shoulder of the glenohumeral joint. That's the biceps brachii. Oh, I forgot one. Yep, good thing I got this PowerPoint here. Now, this one's pretty cool. Um, if you're looking at this part right here, we learned the radial tuberosity is this bump. It's kind of hard to see on this um, video, but on this particular image. But the radial tuberosity is normally a little bit more um, medial. And so when you do supination of the wrist, or technically supination at the proximal radial ulnar joint, it's the biceps brachii in part that's acting to pull that radial tuberosity. And so if you do supination or pronation during the supination action, if you have your hand on your biceps brachii with a bent elbow, you'll be able to feel that supination um, action at the biceps brachii. Okay, so I'll show you that in class when, we, when we're together. All right. Ooh, it's late. <laughs> Next. Now, right underneath the biceps brachii is going to be this muscle over here. This is a different one over here. We're going to look at this one over here. This one's called the brachialis. So it's going to be just underneath the biceps brachii. And look, it's, you know, a similar type muscle. It's much shorter. It's actually a more effective flexor of the elbow joint. So we have an origin up here on the shaft of the humerus and the insertion is going to be down here near the scoracoid process of the ulna. And so again, at the humeral ulnar joint or elbow, this muscle is going to be causing flexion. So technically the brachialis is the primary flexor of the elbow. It just doesn't really tend to get any of the attention. 
because the biceps brachii covers over it. So what we're going to end up seeing when we put all these muscles together is the biceps brachii and then we'll see a little bit of this brachialis kind of sneaking out on either side down towards the elbow. Now over in this picture over here we have a third muscle. So this will be yeah, our third muscle. Biceps brachii was first, brachialis, and now look at this muscle starting here um, on the shaft of the humerus and then running all the way down to the styloid process of the radius. So this one's called brachioradialis. So you want to look for that muscle starting up here on the humerus and then running down the forearm all the way to the radius. But keep in mind folks that this is our origin, this is our insertion. Does this muscle cross the wrist. Does it cross that wrist joint? Do you see the tendon extending into the carpals or into the thumb area? The answer is no, we do not see that. So that muscle is going to end prior to crossing the wrist. Is it crossing the elbow joint? Yes, it is. So we're going to see action at this elbow joint here, humeral ulna, of course, and it's going to be causing flexion. You notice the theme here? we're seeing flexion and flexion and flexion. Now the biceps had three actions. So these two both will do elbow flexion. Another muscle in the um, brachial region, this one you'll be able to tell what its name is um, when you see it in the picture by looking at carefully where it's attached. So you'll notice its insertion point is on the shaft of the humerus and its origin is up here on the coracoid process of the scapula. Here's the acromion, here's the clavicle, here's the coracoid process. So this muscle is known as the coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. So keep in mind we've got this muscle that's running at um, a little bit of an angle here and it's going to be causing two actions for our glenohumeral or our shoulder joint. So let me redraw in my insertion and my origin. How can we get this I closer to this O? Well if you think about what our options are, it's not a really a rotator. We've already talked about those. It's not going to extend the glenohumeral because that would be elongating the muscle. If you do flexion at the shoulder, lifting your arm straight out to the front, that's going to cause that muscle to shorten. So there's one. What about abduction, abduction? You think that's an option? If you lift your arm out to the side, then that muscle is going to elongate. But if you do adduction, a deduction, then this muscle is going to be activated. So we've just figured out that this muscle is responsible for both flexion at the glenohumeral and also adduction, a deduction at the glenohumeral. Adduction and flexion at, we know this, the glenohumeral joint. Okay. Now on the we're on the posterior side now. How do we know? How can you tell that we're on the posterior side? Well, look at the scapula. Hmm, remember way back in the bone section, we're looking for the spine of the scapula, and there it is. The clavicle would be up here. That's the acromion. We can't see the coracoid. So we're looking at the head of the humerus from the back. There's our medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle. What's this bump thing? What's that elbow point called? Hmm, that's the olecranon. And so this particular muscle has an insertion on the olecranon process of the ulna, okay, of the ulna now. Um, one origin here just below the glenoid fossa, a second origin here on the shaft of the humerus, and what we can't see is that there's actually three sections to this muscle, and we've got a big origin down here on the shaft of the humerus. So, oh wait three origins. Hmm. It's called the triceps brachii. Okay, so we're on the posterior surface of the arm. It's going to do just like the biceps did except on the other side. So if you remember the biceps did flexion at the shoulder, flexion at the elbow. 
the triceps accomplishes extension of the elbow, pulling the olecranon back into the olecranon fossa. And also this piece right here helps with the extension at the shoulder. So it's, it is essentially the same as the biceps brachii on the anterior side, but it's on the posterior side and it's going to do, instead of flexion, it's going to do extension at both of those joints. Extension at the glenohumeral and extension at the el elbow or humeral ulnar joint. Okay, what else? A couple other things I wanted to mention because I know we're going to move into the forearm in the next lecture. We talked about how the biceps brachii did supination and there's only one other supinator of the proximal radial ulnar joint and it happens to be called supinator. <laughs> it's actually called supinator. And then there's two muscles that do pronation. Remember supination was when we rotated the hand so the palm was facing forward or we held the soup. Um, pronation when you poured it out or you dumped out the soup and you rotated your palm so that it was posterior. So we've got this muscle. Hmm, let's start with the anatomical position over here. Here is a muscle that will pronate and here is a muscle that will pronate. So let me mark those two. Here and here. And you can probably see maybe this one's called, can you read that? It's called pronator teres and pronator quadratus. Now if you imagine it's going to pull the radius in this direction as it tries to get closer to that origin up here. Again, that's going to pull the radius in this direction. So once we flop the hand over and we're actually pronated, like in this picture, you can see how this muscle shortened. So its origin is going to be on the ulna, and its insertion is going to be on the radius. And it's going to flop that radius over and cause pronation. Same thing, origin, insertion. OK, those are both two pronator muscles. Now, once you flopped that hand over and you're in the pronated position, we have to have a way to get back. So you see how the radial, we were able to see the radial tuberosity here. Now it's kind of rotated around so we can't see it, but we've got this muscle that's now sort of twisted around here. You can tell it's kind of curved. And this muscle is going to contract along with the biceps brachii to flop that wrist back over. And so here is that muscle called supinator. It's literally called supinator. How easy is that? Okay, so FYI, we're going to see those muscles again when we get to the um, lower arm when we we're talking about, you know, the position of the muscles in the lower arm. So we got a couple other ones. I just want you to be aware that they're there. Okay, pronator teres is going to be important when we're in the forearm. Pronator quadratus is way, way underneath, but it's there. And then we've also got one more supinator besides biceps brachii called. Mm, the supinator. Okay, and finally finishing up with some review. I'm going to give you some arrows and then I want you to pause the um, presentation and identify these muscles and then we'll go ahead and go over the answers. So there's two. I'm going to make this one three back here. Here's Four. We may have some repeat answers. Five and six. And then just as a little review, I'm going to make that one back there number seven. So go ahead and pause the program and identify these muscles. Did you do it? Did you pause the program? I hope you did. Okay, so number one is going to be the biceps brachii. Number two underneath is the brachialis. And so this gives you a pretty good view on their position relative to one another. So the actual muscle belly of brachialis is situated a little bit lower on the on the upper arm region. Number three on the posterior side is the triceps brachii and number four if you follow it all the way down we're gonna find out that that's the brachioradialis. 
Number five is another view of the biceps brachii. That's on the anterior surface only. Number six, look where it is, the coracoid process over to the humerus, coracobrachialis. And as review, number seven is going to be the subscapularis, hiding back here on the anterior side of the scapula. And number eight, the pectoralis minor. Okay, and that concludes the muscles of the anterior and posterior upper arm. Thanks.